Well, hi guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm here with the MP Most Sport Drivers. Clem Clement? Yes. Clement. Clément Noblac and Felipe Drogovic, the reigning F2 champion. Thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been such an incredible season. Obviously, Felipe, congratulations on your championship. Thank you. How are you going to both be looking back at this season? It's been such a special one for you, for you both. You can start, mate. Okay, I can start. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's been a, a great season. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think from every perspective, I. I think he has been really good. Um, really enjoying working with the team, working with this guy. Oh. Uh, you're gonna pay me later, you mate. Have to say that. Uh, also, I think on track we, we've been really competitive. Uh, we make sure uh, to be really consistent throughout every round, and yeah, I think that we, we really managed to do that. And obviously, Claire, it's been your first full season in F2. How are you gonna look back on that, and, and how challenging has it been? It's been hard. But uh, it's been good fun as well. Obviously, uh, learn a lot from this guy because uh, he's done a, a mega job all year. And uh, hopefully I can take that on to next year to do better and try and replicate what he's done. Obviously, he doesn't tell much, but I was set up the power all year. So uh, I, I think I played a major role in his, uh, in his, in his championship Obviously. victory. Obviously, your name right. should be on the trophy. Right. No, 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 no not quite that far, but... <laughs> Felipe, talk me through that moment that you won the championship. Obviously, it was through different circumstances, but do you remember the first thought that went through your head when it happened? Yeah, it was... Well, first of all, I actually wanted to be on track, and then as soon as I saw the car Fair was enough. broken, and uh, uh, I didn't feel very well at that moment. I was like, okay, I'm going to head back to the pits. But I think you have to look at it uh, in a positive way, and it was actually quite fun to to win the championship. You know, just yeah, talking you to were the just engineers, <laughs> and I was like, kind of, you know, kind of cheering for my championship from outside. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, I really had fun with it. Uh, yeah, luckily I got the championship there, and you know, I think uh, it was a fun way to get it as well. So, um, I've heard, I've heard you've started a podcast. Is this true? Actually, do you know what's funny? As I was coming over here. I was like, oh, I'm going to film with the guys, and he was like, isn't he the podcast guy? I was like, that is a title change like that. It got from F2 driver to podcast guy. How is it going? Can I just uh, add something? Yeah, please do. <laughs> yeah, we started it. I mean, actually, well, Mark was out. Well, no, yeah. And then he begged to be like a co-host. Oh. Now, that's not it's quite true. It's all coming true. out now, isn't yeah. it? Now, that's not quite true. So basically, uh, me and Felipe were actually the first hosts on it. Uh, so Mark has started it with his friend. And then, basically, I was just such a standout person that they were just like, wow, can you come on? So it's actually been a fun journey because obviously we get a lot of free time. A lot of people think that we race and then we train and so on, but we do get a lot of free time and essentially don't do much as drivers. Um, so it's nice to have something to do on the side. And I think it's been, it's been going well. And obviously, we want to make it into something hopefully quite big. So maybe that's my. Uh... Is that the goal? Yeah, that's the goal. Cool winter break. I you think so. Podcasting away, we won't see you for months. Yeah, I reckon so. I mean, the, the only problem is I think it, it all depends on how we're going to organise it. Because I know Marx is going to be in New Zealand and so on oh, okay. for for the holidays, but we're going to have to work it out some way. Where but... did the name Screaming Meals come from? So it comes from a show <laughs> in New Zealand called okay. Screaming Reels, which okay. is about fishing. But Marcus obviously started taking pictures of his food because he found that quite entertaining. Of course. You guys and must eat some really good food when you're training. Well, yeah, that's basically the whole reason. We were like, we travel this, the world, essentially, and we get to eat out all the time. Yeah. Wouldn't it be fun to do Not necessarily good food. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Not it necessarily good food. It depends where, but yeah, we were just like, let's do something fun and like, then we turned it into a podcast, which was meant to be about food, but turns out we only speak about food for probably about 5% of the time. So. Fair enough. Well, you'll be number one in the charts soon, so I'll look out for you. So you talked a little bit about the winter break. Obviously, this is the last F2 race of the season. What actually happens for you? And also, what's going to happen for you for the next season? I mean, obviously, you've just jo you are dressed for the occasion. You've just joined the Aston Martin Driver Academy, so congrats on that. But what's the next year going to look like for you as well? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I'm already doing kind of, you know, what I'm going to be doing next year. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to be reserve driver for Aston and also reserve and test driver. So probably going to be testing a little bit and also doing some simula some simulator work for them. 
and uh, yeah, I'm gonna be reserved. So I'm gonna be going around. Uh, around the F1 paddock. Yeah, I'm gonna be around, you know, doing interviews, kind of stuff like this, uh, quite a lot, I would say. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be trying to learn as much as I can just to, to see if in the future I can get an opportunity with the main seat. Hope so, hope so. How about you? What does the next six, five months hold? Um, well, I guess obviously we've got the race weekend, then a little bit of testing, so some places okay, to yeah. test. And then probably just go home. Uh, I've been wanting to go to Brazil to see this guy and a few other drivers that I know. So that's definitely on the cards. Uh, but then apart from that, just a lot of training, enjoy the winter. So probably go skiing somewhere. And, uh, Lovely. Well, and it's not a bad life, is it? No, it's good. It's good. It's good. I'm, I'm not going to complain. So you mentioned going to see Felipe, which is really cute. I, I gather you have known each other for a very long time. I, if I'm right in thinking you started in carts together, what, do you remember your first impression of each other? Um, Probably not. I don't know. Well, no. We've been together since 2014. We've been together, yes, yeah, since 2014. So that's the season that I joined International mm -hmm. Karting. And I joined in Cosmic. And then he joined in about three races into the season or four races into the season. So I don't actually remember the exact moment I met him. I knew of him, of course. But... <laughs> uh, I don't know, it was probably just like a, hi mate, hi. Let's put it together for the next eight years. Yeah, <laughs> and there we go. How do you feel, having been together for so long, this is your last race as teammates. How well, do you feel about it? may not be, I mean, down the line. <laughs> down the line, we never know. Down the line, what can we do? For now, yeah, but for now. Yeah, we were together in Karate and I think through the other junior categories, we were, he was doing more in the UK and I was doing more other things, not in the UK. Yeah. Uh, I did German F4 and he did uh, British F4, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I think we're not uh, we're not that close together at that time. But then uh, in F2 it was a uh, uh, it's a good year, a good year together. It's good fun. Yeah, good fun. In F2, I like obviously you're all coming up through the ranks together. Would you say friendships are strong up and down the F2 paddock? Do you all kind of get to know each other? Because that's not really the case so much in F1. I mean, it depends. It depends on the character of the driver. I'm I'm a guy that looks at it in the sense that, as much as we're all fighting for essentially the same thing, which is a seat in F1, um, we've all made sacrifices to get here. So, and we've all lived exactly the same life, pretty much. You left home early. You you started racing karts very early on, and so on. So, there's a lot of common things that not a lot of people know so I tend to be quite close to drivers in that sense because you share a lot actually Your between each other. are so different. Like, yeah. I don't think when you look at it from the outside you're like oh my gosh that's crazy they travel the world. You guys are so young as well and yeah I can imagine that's actually really nice to do with people you like. So that's why like I see it as a, as a, as a place where I have quite a few friends that I'll keep for a very long time. I don't know about you but. Yeah he's not so sure. <laughs> You, you, I'll, you I'll try to keep it, everyone. <laughs> I'll try to keep the friendship, I would say. Thank you very much. Okay, it's be so you both have a Clem and a Felipe. Lucky All right. you, dream team. Thanks. There you go. Thanks. Thank so you. I'm going to ask you a few questions. For example, who... Do you want to join the show, please? <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, Cal. Share your secrets. Yeah, yeah honestly, essentially. You've to find out so much tea. How, how should I show? There's a lot of scandals coming out, actually, in this interview. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a few questions and you've got to both hold up who you think is more likely to do the thing. Okay. I want to see how well you guys know each other. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, who is more likely to miss a flight? <laughs> okay, fine. Just, just that kind of person. Have you yeah. ever missed a flight, actually? I, I've missed a couple. Um, not recently, but, you know, the odd... Oh, I've forgotten my passport kind of moment. So it's yeah. just much worse than missing a flight. Yeah, so, well, it, it tends to be the it tends answer. to be the first thing you you remember, but maybe, but it's fine if not. Yeah, you know, hey ho. That's all right. Life works out. Who do you think would be is a better driver on an actual road in an actual road park? On an actual road, like who's better? You know, oh. parallel parking. Oh, it's you. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. This guy's an absolute weapon on the road. <laughs> Honestly. Have you ever got any like road tickets or anything? Parking tickets? Yeah. I mean, in, in, I actually live in Italy, and okay. in Italy, I can say I only got one or two. Okay. 
but out of Italy, where <laughs> I travel a lot to the races, I probably got like 200 you or something. Do you have a Vespa? Huh? Do you have a Vespa? Vespa? Yeah, no. like a little scooter. No, I wish I had. You should invest in one because that'd keep you under the speed <laughs> limit. No points on that. Easy. <laughs> Who takes longer to get ready? Oh, I don't know actually. Uh, I, I reckon you, you know. <laughs> Five step skincare routine and everything. Fair oh, yeah, enough. big time. Really? Well, you gotta. What? Look, at his, look at his flawless too. skin. <laughs> flawless. Skincare. Yeah, beautiful. I don't have any skincare, but okay. All right, who is messier out of the two? Uh, what? Messier. Messier. I reckon you are. No. Me? Really? Yeah, no way. Massively so. Do you have so. like driver rooms in... Me? In yeah. Here? This guy... Who's messier? In the driver room. <laughs> it's a mess. And the problem is, I already told him many times, and now I'm going to talk to the camera, is that in our truck, we have like two beds. Okay. One for each driver. Cute. And him, for... Some reason that I don't know until now, he brings a third one and puts it in the middle. Another bed. Which leaves me no space. Yeah, it's like a, like a massage bed, you know, like one of those. You have one over there. Yeah, yeah. I know, but I just want a second one so it can be a double. Maybe you can like go in the middle to so get it. So it, it, no. it just leaves me with absolutely no space. Oh, okay, fine. It's definitely you. So definitely. it's me then. All right, who's the most competitive? Oh, uh, 100% Felipe. Really? Probably. I'm really surprised by that. Yeah. You actually, you seem more like chill like lose the passport whatever you're like on the go you're ready yeah. for the flight like five hours before yeah. oh he's he was when did you get here uh i mean <laughs> no no it's no. not an argument because you answer get here really question. really late yeah when answer the question tuesday when, tuesday exactly when did you get here last night me too at 2 a.m yeah kind of get really fine <laughs> exactly so in the end but it all works out you're, yeah, more competitive. All right, and lastly, who's most likely to fake an illness to miss media duties? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got one. We got one right. Thank you guys so much. I'm not going to ask you for an explanation for that one. Have you ever Thanks, done Thanks, guys. Uh, I tried to about 10 minutes Next ago. Next time they say this is coming, you're like, we've got a cough, sorry. <laughs> no, right. I'm joking. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.